Hey, hey, hey. That is a disgusting act by Randy Moss. He did what? Jump pot, baby! Ice up, son. Ice up. That is blasphemous. You can put it on the board. Yes! So taking a look at the South region, as I mentioned, Arizona, the possibility of, um, or, you know, they'll play Wright State on, on Friday. I think I take a look at, I take a look at, um, at, at Arizona and I like, I like their, I like their, I like their path, I should say. I like the way, I like what they can, um, the possibility of the possible teams they could play, I should say. Um, obviously I think they'll win the first round. Uh, and then I look at the 8-9 matchup between Seton Hall and TCU. I think Seton Hall's a great team. Uh, I think they've got plenty of talent there. But I just think that TCU has been that team that, like, they've been like the little yippity dog that you just can't get off your leg. You know what I mean? The dog's constantly biting at you and jumping on you. And, you know, you're not intimidated by him or anything, but you just can't get him to go away. And just like that little dog, they get a bite every once in a while. They get a hold of one. They get a hold of you every once in a while. They, they, you know, that's how TCU is. You know, TCU is not going to wow you with what they're with what they um, with their resume or anything like that. They're not, you know, it's not like they went and, and beat you know nine out of the top ten teams or anything like that. But they held their own in in the games that they lost, and they even you know took down uh, some of the top teams in in, in the um, in the Big Twelve. I believe they beat Baylor in, in, a, a few times. I believe I, I want to say they beat. Uh, they pulled the upset off against um, West Virginia, I believe it was, uh, and then it was a close game between them and and, and Kansas, I want to say. Um, but you know, TCU. Any regardless, TCU is a tough team. I don't think they've gotten nearly enough respect as they should have, and I think they can. I think they have what it takes to beat to beat Seton Hall, and who knows TCU against Arizona again? I think Arizona can beat TCU, but. TCU is that team that you just can never get to go away. I don't think anybody's going to blow out TCU. I think it's going to be a close game. And, and, and you know, TCU, the Horned Frogs have, have proved that this year. Uh, at most of, the, most of their games have been close. And if you let the Horned Frogs hang around, they might just be able to take you down. Looking at the 5-12 matchup, as I mentioned, 5-12 upsets are, are huge. Uh, you know, they're the most... Um, they're the most well-known and, and you know most common upsets. Uh, I don't see UAB beating Houston. Uh, I know Houston's from the AAC. Um, you know, I know they're from the American Conference there, but uh, you know, a, pr a primarily weaker conference this year in basketball. Uh, but Houston, just I think they've got a really good coach. They've got a really good team. I mean, again, what do you want me to say? They're not going to lose to UAB. I don't think. But it is March Madness. You never know what's going to happen. Don't want to count anybody out. But I do like. Houston's chances of winning that first round game. Probably my craziest upset pick of the of the entire tournament, of the entire bracket, is this next one between Illinois and Chattanooga. Go take a look. Do, do me a favor. I bet you I bet half of you the listening right now don't even know what Chattanooga is. You don't know where they're from. You don't even know what their mascot is. Do me a favor and I understand that they're probably they're from a small conference. One one team is going to get that bid out of their conference, but do me a favor and go look at the at the at the stats in their games. They they can score. They can they can score with the best of them, and you know they got some real good players. They got a really good point guard, and they've also got a real good player who you know has had some issues. Um, you know he was a big time recruit, went to Kansas, transferred out. Uh, had some more issues, and he finds himself at Chattanooga, and I'm talking about Silvo D'Souza. That's a good player, you know, forgetting his his issues. But Illinois is a team that had that potential. Illinois is a team that everybody got excited about when it came to the Big Ten. Everybody loved Illinois, and yet they just never, very much so like Purdue, it felt like, and, and UCLA, it felt like they just never put it all together and proved themselves. You know, sure, they have Kofi Coburn, but, you know, if you double-team him and Trent Fra Trent Frazier isn't having a good night, you know, shooting-wise, 
and 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 Trent Frazier and and those guys in the backcourt are struggling, you know, and Kofi Coburn maybe you shut him down, maybe he gets into some foul trouble, you know, where does Illinois go? And that is that's where Illinois has fallen this year. They've had that happen many times. And I think if you're Chattanooga, keep scoring. Like, not obviously, obviously keep scoring. It's going to help. But if you can lock down Kofi Coburn, another pretty obvious key there. But, I mean, if you do that and your guard play is, is, is good, you know, if you can match the guard play of Illinois and Silvo D'Souza does his work against um, Kofi Coburn, Chattanooga could possibly pull off an absolute stunner against Illinois. I could see it happening. I really could. Um, again, most of you probably think I'm crazy, but I, I could see it. I really could. Now, one upset that I'm that a lot of people are, are buying and I'm not buying is Michigan and Colorado State. Michigan has that whole thing, as I mentioned earlier tonight, with with Juwan Howard punching the guy. Um, he gets suspended five games. They kind of lose their mojo a little bit. They go into the Big Ten tournament, lose their first game against Indi- Indiana. And they have that long layoff period. Now, that goes one of two ways. You have that long layoff period. You say, okay, we got to figure this out. If we're lucky enough to make the tournament, you know, we got to figure this out. We cannot play the way we did in the Big Ten tournament. Or the struggles continue. And this year for Michigan, they have been one of the most inconsistent teams in the country, much less the Big Ten. One night, they'll light the, they'll light the court on fire and the next night, it looks like they did, forgot how to play basketball. And it's just, as I mentioned across the way, we'll talk about Arkansas and Alabama and, and even Baylor, it depends on what team's going to show up. And a, a Colorado State team that not, that not a lot of people know about, I mean, Colorado State was in and out of the top 25 at, towards the end of the season. They had their success in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. And I think a lot of people are just saying, oh, you know, Michigan's a Power 5 team. Michigan's in the Big Ten. Colorado State, don't know too much about them. So that means Michigan's going to win. I'm not so sure about that. You know, and they're saying, oh, you know, they're the lower seed. They got the momentum or whatever. Or, or not the momentum. They got, you know, they want to be the team to, they, they want to win. Well, obviously they want to win. But they want to pull the upset. Sure, it's one thing to want to pull the upset. It's another thing to have the talent to do so and to back that up. And, you know, sure, you have Hunter Dickinson, who I don't like. I absolutely despise him. He's good. Like, sure, fine. He's good. You've got Eli Brooks, Spring Grove PA's finest. But I don't know. It just seems like, again, it depends on what Michigan team's going to show up. And I'm I'm not liking their chances against Colorado State. I'm sorry. Tennessee and Longwood, another one of those games. Like, okay, sure, Longwood is now in their first NCAA tournament in program history. Okay, maybe they come in and say, hey, let's make this an extended stay. I just don't see them beating Tennessee. Um, don't know what to say there. I think Tennessee is going to win that game. Ohio State and Loyola Chicago, the 7-10 matchup here in the Southern Regional. I am really excited to watch that game on Friday because knowing Loyola Chicago, we all know what they're about. They've got Sister Jean. They've got, you know, they, they, they've got that, that power. And... You know, sure, it seems like some of those guys have been playing on Loyola Chicago forever, right? They've got that great guard in Lucas Williamson, and they've got some other guys as well. And I really like what they've done in in Drew Valentine's first year as their head coach, right? Porter Moser jumps ship for Oklahoma, and he doesn't even make the tournament in the, in his first year. Meanwhile, Drew Valentine, and mind you, uh, I believe they're Missouri Valley um, Conference, don't knock the Missouri Valley Conference. They've got some pretty tough teams there. Northern Iowa has had their years. They were pretty decent this year. And even Drake was pretty decent as well this year. Um, and and even Missouri State, you know, may, not going to jump out of the, you know, not going to make you, not, not going to knock your socks off by any means, but Missouri State made the uh, made the NIT. You know, I know that's not a, a banner, uh, uh, you know, achievement, but the Loyal Chicago, their conference, not one of those conferences you just say, oh, if, that's easy. And, you know, Sister Jean and Loyal Chicago, they've been known to make some Cinderella runs, right? They made, I believe, the yeah, it was the final four a couple of years ago as an 11th seed. 
Last year, they were an eight seed. They knocked off. Uh, they were an eight or nine. They knocked off number one seed Illinois in the second round last year. So they have done more than enough to prove that they can they can pull the upsets off. And Ohio State, a team that has had their injuries, has had their issues there. Um, they've struggled a lot. They had a really rough end of the season, losing to Maryland. They lost to Michigan, I believe, and then the in the Big Ten tournament, they lose to Penn State. I, you know, and and if they beat Michigan, it was it was a very close game. Uh, no, nah, I, I mean I believe they lost to to Michigan in that game. But uh, so Ohio State, a less than than you know stellar, less than desirable end to their regular season and Big Ten tournament, but. No time to say, okay, hey, we got an easy first round matchup. We can do this. They got Loyola Chicago. And honestly, if this isn't grounds for, you know, lock them in for an upset, I don't know what is. I love Loyola Chicago over Ohio State. I think it's almost like I almost expect them to beat Ohio State. I don't know that Ohio State, you know, they just haven't had it recently. And sure, maybe they get it to, maybe they figure things out. But Loyola Chicago is a very tough team to, to you know, it, it's tough to be in a position at Ohio State where you struggle to end the season, and you say, okay, we gotta, we we're in the tournament, we can do this, and then you turn around and you play, oh, none other than Loyola Chicago, not exactly the easiest, or you know, you're, you're not saying, oh wow, we got this. You're saying, wow, we better, we better buckle in here, we better you know, get it together because they could lose that game. And remember, remember last year, let's take a quick flashback to last year, Ohio state, one of the better teams in the country. Everybody was hyped up about them. They were the number two uh, team. And I, I forget what region it was. But they were the number two team in their bracket and they were a two seed and they lost to none other than 15th seeded oral Roberts, who not many people heard of oral Roberts before last year. And, you know, they had uh, Ed O'Banner and um, Max Asmus. And Ola Roberts just shocked the world beating Ohio State. So Ohio State has not had the, not exactly had the best end to their season, uh, to their seasons the past couple of years. Now Villanova, Delaware, I don't see Villanova losing that one. But a Villanova, Loyal Chicago matchup doesn't exactly have me super confident if I'm Jay Wright. And sure, Villanova wins the uh, wins the Big East. That's great. But I don't care what seed number you are. I don't care if you're a one seed. I don't care if you're a one, you know, I don't care if you're a one, four, five, twelve, thirteen, seven, two. If you're playing Loyola Chicago, that's gonna be tough. Right? You're gonna you know that they're gonna give you everything you can handle. And if any double digit seed was gonna make a sweet sixteen run. It would for me. It would be none other than Loyola Chicago. And no, it's not because well, that's because they did it the past few years. I mean, that's such an easy thing to say. It's because I watched them play this year. I know what they're capable of, and when they when they're down, I mean, there were plenty of times this year when I watched them play Drake in the regular season and in the uh, in the Mountain. I'm sorry, the Missouri Valley uh, Championship game. And even when they played Northern Iowa and Missouri State in regular season and, and post and, and in a Missouri Valley postseason play, they were losing in those games, and yet they never got discouraged. They were able to go in the locker room, figure it out in some games, and come out and you know find a way to come out on top. And I think any you know if you can come out and beat Ohio State, that's going to give you even more momentum and even more reason to say, hey, we can do this again. We've done it before. Why not do it again? And so I like that there. Uh, Arizona and TCU, as I mentioned, that's going to be tough as a possible second round matchup. Even if Arizona plays Seton Hall, that's going to be tough. I do like Arizona's chances there. Uh, Houston against Illinois or Chattanooga. Either way, I like Houston to win that game. I think Illinois just... Illinois has talent, but the problem is their bench. If you get a few of their starters into foul trouble... You know, lock lock them up. They they're not having a good night. They don't have too many other directions uh, that they can go to. They don't have too many other any other uh, guys they can turn to, and that's been their biggest flaw for Illinois. Tennessee, I, I whether it's Colorado State or Michigan, I like their chances there. I think Tennessee will make a trip to the Sweet Sixteen, 
playing either Villanova or Loyola Chicago. Uh, and either way, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, when Loyola Chicago made the run to this Final Four, they played Tennessee in the Elite Eight, I believe. Um, so a possible rematch there. I'm not super confident. I'm not, I'm not speaking this into existence. I'm not saying, hey, Loyal Chicago is going to go beat Ohio State, and then they're going to go beat Villanova. I'm just saying it's a possibility, something to look out for. Um, but a possible Villanova, Loyal Chicago, I, I don't see Ohio State making the Sweet 16, but I think Tennessee versus one of those one of those teams in the Sweet 16, that could be a good game. I think it's anybody's game there. Even if it's Villanova, I like Tennessee to come out on top there. Uh, I think it's going to come down to Arizona, Houston, or Tennessee for Final Four bids out of the South region. Um, but, you know, who knows, right? We might see another Loyola Chicago Cinderella run. You never know. 